I have an older brother who I've been estranged from for a long time. Not even sure where or if he lives at this point. Don't really care. Apparently, when he was in his mid-20s, he sold some to a fertility clinic for easy cash. We know this because his spawn, Jake, 23 male, recently tracked my family down after taking one of those DNA tests. He could not contact my brother, no shock there, but found me on LinkedIn, reached out, and we met for lunch. Based on his messages, initially I thought my brother knocked someone up and abandoned her, but at lunch I found out he was conceived using a donor of my brother's. He does look a lot like my brother did when we were younger, but based on his origination, I don't feel any familial bond, if I'm being honest. I have my own family that I care about deeply, and I really don't need much more. I guess Jake feels somewhat of an identity crisis from not knowing where he came from, so we wanted to meet. I told him I would meet, though I felt weird about it. I did feel like I should at least meet him to share the very limited info I know about our family medical history. Luckily, we're pretty healthy, but I have some extended relatives diagnosed with cancer in the last few years, so I told him that, but it was clear he wanted more. He asked about my weekend plans, and I told him I was hosting an event with friends and family. He asked if he could come and meet my kids and some other relatives. I told him sorry, but that's too weird. I have no ethical qualms with a donation, IVF, or any of that, but I feel like it makes a difference that he was created that way. So I told him no and didn't want to pursue another meeting with him. He seemed upset but left with no incident. Then lately, he's reached out again, telling me that I'm treating him like crap when we're technically family. I told him no again. He wouldn't stop pushing. So I told him I don't consider him family whatsoever, that I was blocking him. And if he reached out again, I would speak to my attorney about a restraining order. My wife thinks I was too harsh to say those words, but agrees we shouldn't maintain contact. It'd be weird to have him meet our kids, given the situation. My friend, however, says I'm kind of an idiot because Jake is clearly having an identity crisis and I'm in a position to help. I have mixed feelings about that. Not the idiot. Sure, he's technically family because you share some DNA, but that doesn't give you any obligation to him. Family can be defined in lots of different ways. You choose to define your family in a certain way and you are not obligated to include him. He can call you his family he can invite you to family gatherings or family events, but he doesn't have the right to expect you to include him in the same way. You are the idiot. If you had zero interest in a relationship with Jake, you probably shouldn't have agreed to meet with him. It sends the wrong message, and telling him to his face that you and zero of your family will ever have a relationship with him is pretty harsh. You could have just sent him medical info over email and let him know you prefer not to meet. Generally, you made this much harsher than it ever needed to be. You are the idiot, OP. Do you speak for your entire family? Of course, you don't need to have a relationship with Jake, but some of your extended family very well may be interested in meeting him. It doesn't seem like you gave the rest of your family that choice. Hello, Ansu. I'd like to introduce you to Jake. He has some of my brother's DNA from an anonymous donation. It's a harsh reality for Jake but it's not your family's problem. And your brother clearly won't care, so it would be best for Jake to stay away. Call me cynical, but I think he was looking for money. He's not family, and the donation is supposed to be anonymous. There may be dozens if OP's brother has one child via donation. Hundreds. Are they all family? You are not the idiot, OP. And I think these DNA tests are really messing up the whole thing of donating. You should be able to donate completely anonymously. OP, I don't really believe you when you say, I don't care about IVF or donations and all that, but you just don't seem to care until they relate directly to you. Spawn and other terms are pretty callous towards someone who you admit is going through an identity crisis. You seem to place the family, not family distinction on how he was conceived. That makes you the idiot. I just feel sad for Jake. He's reaching out and trying to find a bond he feels is missing and gets rejected. This has nothing to do with money. We split the rent and we share everything 
I'm an engineer and my girlfriend works in healthcare. She doesn't work currently. She's a resident doctor. One month ago, her contract at the hospital ended and she's been unemployed since. She's already found another job and she would be able to start two months after her previous job ended, which means a month from now. So for the past month, she's been living her best life. She's spending her morning studying for her new job and reading, watching Netflix, going to the gym and runs with her dog, etc. However, she hasn't started contributing more to the household. I mean, she still cooks and cleans every day, but she still expects me to wash the dishes and she won't pick up my clothes after I've returned from work. The other day, I left a bunch of my mail on the table and when I returned, it was left unopened. So I asked her why she didn't look through it and she told me she's not my secretary. I've been hinting that she should be picking up more chores now that she's unemployed, but she says that she's not my housekeeper. She does more than half the chores, and since my workload is not increased, I should be able to do mine. I mean, yes, I can do it, but I'm tired from work and she isn't. So I had expected her to step up a little, but no. She claims this is her break from working hard, and other hurtful things like she didn't go to med school to be a live-in maid, etc. So, am I the idiot for expecting her to do most of the chores while she's unemployed? You are the idiot. I damn near spit out my coffee when I read this crap. Pick up your clothes? Open your mail? What? Even if she was a stay-at-home mom, those are still things you should do, period. She won't pick up my clothes. Are you five? You are the idiot, OP. You are your own responsibility, and it's common courtesy to pick up after yourself. She didn't read your mail? This would be a violation of privacy in most relationships. Who wants to open someone else's bills? Very strange the expectation you've got going on here. She's still contributing financially, cooking and cleaning every day. She's not your mom. You subtly slipped it in that she went to med school, so she just finished her residency and has two months before she starts her job as an attending? aka a doctor, not under the supervision of other doctors. Dude, she has undoubtedly been working way harder than you. Generally, in the U.S., residents work 70 to 90 hours per week. You even mentioned she's studying up to prepare for the new position during this period. Because, spoiler alert, doctors pretty much always have to study, constantly throughout their careers. Jesus Christ, you're lucky she didn't dump you for even implying she could be your personal maid. She's enjoying a well-deserved break while still contributing to the household. You just sound bitter and terrible. We're all uni students, and on Saturday, we had pre-drinks at Jane's house. Although I've only met Jane a handful of times, she's a friend of my best friend, Katie, and Katie brought me along to the party, which was fine with Jane. People were playing music using Jane's Spotify and were adding things to the song queue. At one point, Q ended, and it reverted back to Jane's playlist. The first song was in German. It was Rammstein, which is fine, I guess. It's a popular band. No one noticed or cared. But then came some Spanish pop song. Again, no one cared, but I noticed. Then some Spanish rock, some more German metal, and some English songs, and then Spanish again. No one bothered to change the songs to English and I found her playlist to be really obnoxious and kind of showing off how cool she was. So I ended up adding a bunch of songs to the queue. Later on, I was looking at her books on her bookshelves, and I noticed a bunch of books in German and Spanish and English. I thought it was really cringy and attention-seeking, and I decided to call it out in a humorous way. I loudly, in front of everyone, told her to stop being such a pick-me and that no one would believe she read those books. She looked confused and asked what I meant, and I told her it was about the foreign books, that no one would believe she speaks two languages. I mean, come on, she's studying maths. Everyone looked at me funny. She told me that I was rude, and that I should leave if I were going to continue being rude. I said that I wasn't rude, and it was true. She was being a pick-me, but I'll drop it. Everyone was weird to me for the rest of the night, and Katie told me later that Jane actually spoke those languages fluently. How was I supposed to know? I acted based on the info presented to me. Everyone is calling me an idiot, and I won't be invited further. But I don't think I was. Am I the idiot? LOL, OMG. 
It's been a while since I've encountered someone so obnoxious and immature. You are the idiot, and also stupid, because the info presented to you was that she probably spoke those languages based on books and music. That was your info. I can't stop laughing. I noticed Spanish, German, and English books. Based on the available evidence, I concluded she only spoke one language. Notice how these two statements don't match? You can claim you made that judgment based on the info presented. And what info was that besides your own closed-minded judgments? I low-key wish she would have told you off in another language as you were escorted out the door. I'm guessing you don't get invited to many places if this is the way you act. Listening to music from different countries is pretty normal, as is speaking another language. How could you think this girl would do what she did because she's a pick-me? Isn't the obvious reason she likes the music and speaks the languages? Wow, 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 just wow. I'm wondering who's really the pick-me girl. My husband and I have been married for two years and have five children. His daughter from a previous marriage, teen, my two sons from an earlier relationship, young teen and teen, and two children together, toddlers. My husband's daughter lived primarily with her mother until she was in eighth grade when she was offered a scholarship to go to an outstanding boarding school. I've never agreed with sending teenagers to live away from family, but her mother and my then fiance agreed that it would benefit her. They drafted a new custody agreement to reflect the new school schedule. My husband moved out of state so we always had summers and holidays anyway. When I married my husband, I thought she would just be a day boarder, which seems better than full time, so I let it go. By the time I learned the truth, 2020 was in full swing, and removing her wouldn't have been safe, even if she wanted to leave, which she didn't. Fast forward to 2022. She's a teen and a junior. I recently learned that her mother moved back to her home country six months ago, and has been letting my stepdaughter manage her own money. This means that there's not even a parent in the same state or even side of the country for my stepdaughter. As a result, she's completely independent in her day-to-day -day life. My stepdaughter has every weekend unsupervised to do whatever she pleases, and independent access to multiple major cities, and only a day trip from another country where she has dual citizenship. I've seen Facebook posts of her just going to art shows in other states without her having even pretended to ask one of her parents for permission. This isn't acceptable. It's not okay for a teenager to just go live her own life, especially to this degree. We have two sons who are only one and three years behind her, and they're also starting to see the double standard. I would never let any of my kids do the things my stepdaughter's doing. She's my child too, and this needs to stop. She needs to change schools to be with her mother or with us and be part of a family. My husband says that it's different because she was raised differently and is just more responsible. But that's BS. If he actually thinks she's not behaving like a typical teenager with that level of freedom, he's lying to himself. My stepdaughter loves her school, of course, and is very resistant to changing schools for all of one year of high school to leave her friends and no doubt doesn't want to actually have rules. I'm still pushing the issue, and now my husband and stepdaughter are mad at me for trying to change the status quo. The boys are mad at me for having double standards, and other family members are mad at me for either over or understepping in my role. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. She's at boarding school and doesn't need to ask permission to see art shows. You're being dramatic and she's not even your child. On top of that, you're controlling. You're acting as if she's getting drunk and high every night and interacting with bad people her age or older. Calm down. You have no good reason for her to change schools and you're overstepping your role. Her parents have already created a plan and you have to respect that. But didn't you even read? She's going to art shows. That is a dangerous road she's treading. That is just a gateway to museums and heaven forbid, plays and or operas just complete juvenile delinquency. I shudder to think she might get involved with that ballet crowd. OP says that the bio mom moved back to her home country and that the stepdaughter is only a day trip away from a country she has dual citizenship in. That's most likely the same place, right? 
Meaning the bio mom is only a day trip away? There's no reason to believe the stepdaughter isn't communicating with her mom and checking in. Honestly, OP just sounds jealous. I wonder what the child support arrangement is. I'm sure it would be much less if the stepdaughter lived with OP and a kid's dad. OP, you are jealous. And if your kids have a problem with this, too bad. They have different parents who do things differently. So teach them better. I'm a 27-year-old female and I wear hair accessories, lots of them, and have huge collections of hairpins, headbands, hair clips, side combs, etc. And they're all bright colors and funny shapes. Some people in my life consider it childish, especially my boyfriend. He thinks I wear them excessively and says they make me look like a teenager. Recently, he has been complaining about being too embarrassed to take me out or go anywhere with me because of my hair accessories, even though it's not a new thing. Still, he said his friend sat him down and told him that his girl, me, was dressing like a little girl or a mentally challenged girl who made him look embarrassed. He gave me an ultimatum saying he won't go anywhere with me unless I stopped wearing this stuff, but I refused. He stopped going anywhere with me and started excluding me from the events he went to. His sister's birthday was a couple of days ago and he wanted me to go so bad. I said I'd still wear my hair accessories, but he threw a fit and refused. I found out that he took my entire collection away and dumped it in the sea the next day. I was so angry, I unloaded on him completely. He told me to stop being childish and start acting my age. He even said I should get therapy for whatever childhood trauma I went through, causing me regression. I yelled at him, demanding he pay me for the entire collection, and he said that he could only offer to get me a colorless scrunchie that women my age wear, but I refused. His family got involved, and his mom offered me to pay, but I refused to let her and told her her son was the one who threw it away. He kept refusing, saying it's not worth fighting for and that I should learn to step out of my comfort zone and try new things, but I insisted he pays me. His argument is that this is impacting his public image and that he'd already spoken to me about it, but I ignored him. Am I overreacting here? Not the idiot. This man is not for you. And he's the one who needs therapy for whatever is bugging him because that's not normal behavior. You don't obsess over your partner's fashion choices like that. And then the fact that he threw it all in the ocean. Well, that's a whole other reason to choose celibacy over this mess. He's actively polluting the world because of his weird obsession with your fashion choices. You're going to hear this a lot, but I definitely think you should reconsider this relationship. Is it acting your age? to know your style and what you like and stand up for it? You're absolutely not the idiot. And your boyfriend, hopefully ex by now since he doesn't respect you and only wants to change you to fit what he thinks is right, deserves to get his butt kicked. I'm sorry, but in the sea? How damn dramatic can you be? His image is getting affected. Please, he's being so immature. He's acting like a child that, after not getting what they want, throws a tantrum and destroys things. It's abusive, red flags galore, major warning for future abuse. I'd say accept his mother's money. This, get mom's money because you aren't going to get it from him. Dump him and then explain the situation publicly. He's worried about his image? He's given you plenty to actually affect it with. Acting like a child, bailed out by mommy, that's the image he wants? OP, just throw the boyfriend in the sea and go buy some Technicolor scrunchies and be done with it.